everybody, welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to do episode two on welding discontinuities. Number one on the list is incomplete joint penetration. Some of you are all too familiar with that. You know who you are. Number two is weld spatter. That's spatter, not splatter. Splatter is something you do after a night of binge drinking draft beer and eating Taco Bell at four in the morning. And number three is excessive reinforcement. Honestly, I've, I've got nothing. Okay, so what we've done here is we beveled the plates improperly intentionally. So as you can see, we have a 22 and a half degree, whereas I should have a 37 and a half degree plus or minus bevel angle for the plate if I was going to perform open root. And then we have a root face on here. Now, typically when I do this, I would run 37 and a half degree on both plates. I would run 332nd to eighth inch root opening and then about a 16th of an inch land. So the land on this one's a bit excessive. It's roughly about 332nds of an inch. We have a 332nd root opening and then the 22 and a half degree bevel. So we got a mixed up pup right here. So hopefully we'll be able to get some incomplete joint penetration and show this to you guys. And I, I kind of want to stress this just for the simple fact that as a welder, you probably spend about 80% of your time, your labor and prep work. The other 20% is going to be welding. Okay, that's the most technical, but how do you expect to make chicken soup from chicken shit, right? You have to start off and set yourself up for success by doing the appropriate preparation. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tack this up. I have a piece of uh, 332nd TIG rod. I'm just gonna bend this into a little horseshoe and stick that in there. And that's gonna help me keep my plate spacing uh, right where I want it. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, this right side first, get that tacked in. And then I'm gonna verify the gap prior to welding the other side. So if I weld on one side, it's gonna open up on the other. So I'll just tap this back together, re-verify it with the TIG filler wire and before I tack that up. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw this up in the stand. We'll go ahead and do some vertical. It's Friday, why not? Okay, so first I'm gonna light up on the tack down here and I'm gonna get that burnt in and then I'm just gonna start a little bit of whip and pause. Just advancing ahead and dropping back down. Now you'll notice I don't have as much punch as I should, and that's you know mostly because of the improper bevel angle and the excessive amount of uh, land that I have on here. Typically, I would run a smaller land and a wider bevel. So you can see how the material, the filler metal, is kind of bunching up in the center of that joint. I'm probably not getting good penetration of the backside, although I can I can hear some uh, some faint penetration on the back, and we'll go ahead and terminate. Now again, what we should do for the restart is feather this tack out, clean this joint out, uh, but we're kind of trying to show you exactly what not to do and what happens if you don't do it correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and skip feathering that out. Just know that you know if you do go to do a restart on open root or any, anything for that nature, you should go ahead and, and feather that tack back out so you can burn back into the back side of the plate. But we're gonna be lazy today because we wanna show you discontinuities and what's causing them. So we'll go ahead and tie into this and we're just gonna keep our way, keep working our way up the joint, trying to penetrate into the back side. All right, so perfect. We've got quite a few areas where I have incomplete joint penetration. It's exactly what we're trying to replicate. So as you can see in here, the, the weld just didn't, wasn't able to punch through that material enough. And that's basically because we squeezed it together too tight with that land. Now that's not to say that, I mean, if you ran a 332nd gap, yeah, you could penetrate through there. Sometimes you're in the shop, you're out in the field, you know, things just aren't the way they are in a textbook. It's not the way it's in a classroom. You have to make adjustments. You could turn your arc force up a little bit higher. You could also increase your amperage. You could put a little bit more pressure on the rod and still burn to the backside. We're trying to show you through repetition and building good habits uh, and things like that. All right, so that was incomplete joint penetration. Got another plate here. Where to put the fill in off camera, so I like to keep my fill, this one here is about just flush with the plate, some spots a little bit higher than the plate. But typically what I like to do is keep my, my fill pass a 16th below the, the weld surface. If I can do that, I can almost guarantee myself that I'll fall under that eighth inch cap that I, that I want to put on here. Now I'm going to go, just for the sake of time, I'm going to put a wider pass on here than normal. Uh, you could technically qualify that as a weave, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to bounce from side to side and kind of take my time in the middle. This is exactly what you do not want to do. I'm trying to replicate a high crown in the middle of this weld so that we can show you excessive weld reinforcement. So I'm gonna go slow through the center of this pass. Typically, if you were doing this correctly, you would hold the sides for about two seconds and then go fast to the middle because we're working out of position. The center of the weld is gonna take care of itself due to gravity. 
So you just kind of bounce back and forth from side to side. We'll get all the way to the top. You'll notice also that there's not a runoff tab here. I'm expecting or anticipating rather some underfill in this section and uh, maybe a little bit of weld metal to roll back on us once we get here, once we get closer to the top because there's nothing to support that weld. So what we are looking at right now is excessive weld reinforcement. So ultimately I wanted to be over an eighth of an inch and it looks like we are, we are right there. I'm about 5 30 seconds to 3 16 in some areas. That's excessive reinforcement. I don't want to be anything higher than an eighth inch. That's why I like to say I like to work a little bit lower than an eighth of an inch. That way I've got a little bit of a buffer in there. That is your excessive weld reinforcement. You want to avoid that whether it is on the root or whether it is on the surface or the cap of your plate. Either way, you don't want to be above an eighth of an inch. Once we get over 3 eighths plate, we start getting into like thicker material, one inch and above. There are different criteria. You are allowed to have different sizes of weld reinforcement, but more or less for, for D11 structural stuff, it's all gonna be 3 8 plate, eight inch weld reinforcement on the cap or on the root. So, you know, always try to keep it under an eighth of an inch. All right, so next we have spatter, okay? Spatter's pretty common. Uh, a couple different ways you can get spatter, especially with the shield of metal arc welding is the amperage. If it's set way too high for the electrode, if you, you know, exceed that current carrying capacity of that electrode, you're gonna end up with weld spatter. Uh, additionally, too long of an arc length. You know, if you're keeping uh, excessive arc length, you're gonna end up and get spatter that way as well. Traveling too slow can also cause uh, excessive spatter on here, you know, spatter in general. You wanna try to minimize spatter, just uh, doesn't look good. Uh, you can get called out for having buckshot, as it's more commonly referred to out in the field. On your on your weld piece, uh, you may be asked to grind all that uh, that stuff off. Uh, you know, it's just it's not a good discontinuity to have on your material. You want to try to alleviate that as much as possible. So as far as arc length, you know, you want to you want to keep the same diameter uh, or same arc length as the diameter of the electrode you're using. So for instance, I was using an eighth inch electrode. I should maintain about an eighth inch of an arc gap. Uh, you know, for that electrode, if I jump up to a 532nd, same thing, I want to maintain a 532nd arc gap in there. Try to stay within the correct amperage range, go down nice, slow, steady travel speed, not too slow. You'll notice if you start getting too slow, you're going to develop spatter. It's a good indication to speed up and then keep that arc length nice and consistent. You're also going to get spatter all over your material, uh, your work table. Uh, it's just more for you to clean up, you know, so try to pay attention to it. If it's, if you're developing spatter, you know, Maybe stop, check your adjustments, uh, check your polarity settings, make sure you're not traveling too slow for what's going on. And um, I mean, that's pretty much it. Spatter's relatively simple to get rid of, so I don't wanna spend too much time on that one. We definitely appreciate the support, and until next time, make every weld better than your last. Yeah, better. Remember baby buggy bumpers. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Yes! You said welcome back to the shop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Arc strike. Arc strikes. Carelessness. Camera guy didn't have any fun making this video. I had some fun. We, we got to reference Pootie Tang. That was fun. What a ta sabate.